Good afternoon. Welcome to your 4 to 5. I'm Eric Tilton, joined by Maddie Gardner. Yeah, Deja Moise out on assignment. Yes. This is an interactive news show. We want to connect with you. We want you to chime in on our live stream. It is up on WFNY News 2's Facebook page right now. Yeah, during the breaks, of course, we'll talk with you there. But make sure when you post something, just use the hashtag word4, number2, word5, so that you can keep connected with us. All right, we are going to start the 4 to 5 today by checking our email bag. Now, this is the part of the show where we answer your questions or address comments from viewers. So today's question comes from Richard. He sent an email and said, to whom it may concern, is there any evidence of an earthquake tremor? Our whole house shook on Tuesday morning at 1.30. We live in southeast Guilford County near Pleasant Garden. Thanks, and then he signed it, Richard Allen. So our weather team says yes, a magnitude 2.3 earthquake rattled Forest Oaks around 1.30 this morning. Several people felt the tremors, but no damage has been reported. Sandy Jones lives about four miles away from the epicenter. It was about 1.30 this morning. I was sitting in bed watching TV, and it felt like a truck, a tractor trailer, had come off of Alamance Church Road and hit the side of the house. The front door sounded like it was shattering, so we went out the front door, but the front door wasn't shattered. All right, so a lot of people chiming in about maybe feeling that earthquake in yeah. Guilford County. Well, and at first, the USGS, which um, governs that, and they're the ones that put out whether we've actually had an earthquake, they said no for a long time. And I think they had to do some research and check on the sensors and that type of thing. And then later they said, yep, there was a small one out there. And we are just getting news in here that there was a 7.7 .7 earthquake that hit Cuba and Jamaica today. No reported injuries or death in that as well. But the center of the quake was located about 73 miles northwest of Jamaica. It was about six miles deep. So again, not reporting any injuries or any damage at this time, but certainly something we're going to keep an eye on. Also reading that it was felt as far away as South Florida, according to some posts on social media, and buildings were evacuated in Miami because of that earthquake. So Obviously separate from right. what we're talking about here, but that literally was just handed to us here. Absolutely. So let's get back here closer to home and see what people are saying about that. Jalen Gilkey over here watching things for us and were people talking about the earthquake very much not we don't have any comments about the earthquake quite yet but we do have some hellos and we want to reach out to Kathy she says she's happy that she made it on time today we're happy to have you here Kathy and we got Ramona Miller she also says good afternoon so good afternoon to you Ramona you all make sure you share and join our live stream on Facebook make sure you comment keep up with us so we can interact with you you make sure you use that hashtag the word for the number two <laughs> the word five all right, yeah, a lot of people joining us on Facebook today, so keep that up. You know, a lot of people wondering, hey, the sun's back out. What's yeah. the forecast looking like? Yep, and uh, we've got some decent stuff coming in, except it will be getting cooler. I will warn you about that. Let's go back here and take a look. You can see with our sky cam here, uh, it looks pretty good in the Greensboro. Clear skies, and we'll see the clear skies going into the evening as well as we see that overnight low at 31. Tomorrow, clouds go on the increase. There is a chance of maybe a late-day shower. The high temperature tomorrow, that's exactly where we should be, folks, right at about 49 degrees for tomorrow. Uh, and uh, other than that, when you look at our uh, seven day and what we expect to see over the next week or so, looks like um, things are going to be a little bit chilly for a while. Here's your seven day outlook with 45 on Thursday. We're watching that day. That's the day we're talking about. Will we have anything mixed in with the rain because that overnight low 37 and uh, still a little bit above freezing, but we'll watch for that. It's only a 30% chance. I think now it's just rain. And then Friday we have a 40% chance of a shower. Bring that up to a 60% on uh, Saturday, and then we'll uh, hover right around that uh, 49 degree mark for your Saturday. Sunday, clearing out in 54, and we get warm heading into next week, Monday and Tuesday, 59 and 61. All right, let's get a look at your other news headlines of the day with your 4 to 5 roundup. An Ashboro man accused of holding a woman in sexual servitude is out of jail. The Randolph County Sheriff's Office says Salvador Escobar made bail. He's accused of holding a woman against her will for more than five years. Investigators say he withheld basic life needs in exchange for sexual acts. Escobar posted his $100,000 secured bond after he first appeared in court on Friday. A Greensboro Biscuitville honored a man credited for stopping a kidnapping in their restaurant. They gave Cody Bird a Good Citizen Award today. Biscuitville is grateful for their Good Samaritans like Cody right here in our community. Bird was visiting the Biscuitville off of West Market Street when he saw a strange man near a little girl. The man followed the little girl to the bathroom, but that's when Bird intervened. He took pictures of the man's car and then called 911. Greensboro police found the man and charged him with attempted kidnapping. 
miss you too. That's sweet, but really, you might miss the conversation hard candies this year because most of them will be blank. Spangler Foods says 65% of the conversation hearts for Valentine's Day are going to be blank. Only 3% of their candies were produced normally this year. So what happened? The company took over production from Neko, and because of that takeover, the manufacturing equipment that prints those candies, yeah, it had to be shipped from Boston to Ohio, and then the printers malfunctioned. So Spangler says not only will the candies be different this year, they might run out entirely before Valentine's Day. How am I supposed to start a conversation? And it is National Plan a Vacation Day, so I have one question for you. Where are we going? The beach? Ooh, Europe. What about the moon? Oh, wait a second. I don't like this. Bring me back down to earth. Oh yes, this is much better. So National Plan of Vacation Day is the last Tuesday of January each and every year. And it's really just a way to remind Americans to plan time off and go ahead and get those vacation requests in. So uh, here's mine, boss. <laughs>want to turn now to the latest in the death of Kobe Bryant. The National Transportation Safety Board is still investigating the helicopter crash that killed the NBA star along with eight others. The NBA released a statement today and saying that the Lakers and the Clippers game is going to be postponed tonight. They say they made that decision out of respect for the Lakers. It is not clear when that game will be rescheduled. Brian and his daughter Gianna were among the nine people killed when a helicopter crashed on Sunday. Investigators say the pilot of the helicopter told air traffic control he was climbing to avoid a cloud layer. Well, since the news of Kobe Bryant's death, a petition launched to feature him in the NBA logo. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you think Kobe Bryant should be featured on the NBA logo? Just answer yes or no. Now, millions have signed this petition online to change that silhouette figure that you see in the NBA logo. And so we're going to talk about that. What do you think about this? Um, should that be the case? And Jerry West, by the way, has been that silhouette. I didn't know that until today, literally, but that was the uh, silhouette of Jerry West since 1969. That's been there. If you look at Kobe's stats, by the way, four time NBA All-Star game, MVP, 11 time uh, all NBA first team, two time all NBA third team, and nine time NBA all defensive first team. That's amazing. I mean, that those stats are staggering right. when you look at that, and that's why a lot of folks call him the greatest of all time. And I don't know well, about the logo. We'll see how people uh, read on that. I mean, to me, those stats are, it's hard to argue. Right. I asked this morning if Jerry West had commented on this. I'd be interested to see what he had to say Absolutely. since he is currently featured on the logo. Let's check in now with Jalen Gilkey. He's over here uh, monitoring comments right now. Have you gauged reaction to possibly putting Kobe in the logo? You know, well, we, uh, I touched on this yesterday. You know, I'm all for Kobe becoming the logo. Um, I just think his greatness in the way the tragedy that his life was taken, I think that is something that kind of monitor, I would not monitor for calls for something like this to happen. Um, we reach out, we say, Tanya, she said yes, change it. I agree with you, Tanya. I just think it would be the right thing to do. He was, like I said, he's such a great player and in many eyes, they considered him the greatest of all time. And the tragic loss behind that also, I feel like that's a proper way for the league to commemorate it. Yeah, I think that that in what you're saying to Jalen, the fact that yeah, he is, if not the greatest, one of the greatest for sure. You could say probably the top five, top three. Um, but the fact of what happened, I think that in the way to honor him, that that might be a great way to do it. Hmm. Keep on voting on WFMY.com slash vote. Now you can also use our free news to app. Of course, a lot of tributes coming, not just from the athletic community, but really all across the world. Now Nike is paying tribute to Kobe Bryant, pulling Kobe Bryant products from the website. Now the brand's website homepage has a tribute to the NBA star. And then if you search their site for Kobe's line, you see this message here that says in memory of Kobe Bryant. And the same tribute is all over the company's social media pages. Nike is currently reevaluating its strategy for releasing his signature shoe. The company says they want to limit a reseller's opportunity to purchase a bunch of shoes and then price gouge buyers.
hard to believe this, but the BBB is issuing a consumer alert for Kobe Bryant fans here. Nonprofit organization says that everyone should be careful and look for phishing scams, believe it or not. One scam is spear phishing, they call it, when emails are sent claiming to have exclusive news or information. Do not click on those links unless you absolutely know what that source is. Another is clickbait, emails with sen sensationalized headlines claiming that they're urgent. Those links and emails typically start with shocking, the word shocking, or never before seen. Just remember if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, and avoid clicking on those links. Of course, in addition to Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi, seven other lives were lost in that helicopter crash, and we want to remember those victims as well. John Altobelli, a head baseball coach, was on the helicopter along with his wife Carrie and their daughter Alyssa. Christina Mauser, an elementary school girls basketball coach, died as well, along with Sarah Chester, her daughter Peyton, and the pilot Aria Zobayan. Gianna, Alyssa, and Peyton all played basketball together. We are certainly keeping their families in our thoughts and in our prayers. We'll be right back. Uh, yep. Welcome back to your four to five. You know, hard to believe today is the anniversary of the day the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded. 73 seconds after its launch from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, seven crew members, including U.S. Navy Captain Michael John Smith of Beaufort, North Carolina, were killed in that explosion. Today, North Carolina A&T alum Ronald McNair was honored. He was among those killed in that accident as well. Investigators determined that cold weather caused a seal in the craft's right rocket booster to fail. Pressurized hot gas reached external fuel tank and that caused an explosion there. The fatal mission gained huge attention back in the 80s. It was the first time a civilian was allowed to travel into space. NASA suspended shuttle flights for two years following that. And that civilian was a teacher, Krista McCullough, and a lot of her classmates and her parents were there at the, the uh, launch site watching as that entire thing unfolded. It was, it, it was a horrible thing to see on live TV and a lot of folks at first just thought, oh, well, maybe there's a small malfunction, but the right. shuttle itself was okay. Of course, that, that wasn't the case. But I asked everybody on my Facebook page, where were you? Do you remember where right. you were when this national event happened? Yeah, many people do. Let's check in now with Jalen Gilkey. What are people saying? 
Yeah, so we're gonna start with our first comment. It comes from Patricia. And Patricia, she says, she was at Bartley Yancey High School in civics class when this took place. Dottie, she says, I was standing on my front porch watching the launch before going to pick up my daughter from school. And Anita, she said, at work, at my desk, the radio was on, could not believe it. Mm -hmm. And Brenda, she said, to this day, when I hear the throttle up, I shudder. That's kind of, that's wild, man. She's just kind of scarred from that. And our last comment comes from Susan. She says, I was on my way to Elon College for classes. I was in shock. Don't know how I got there. Can't remember the rest of the drive after hearing the news. Mm. Just, just a true national tragedy, yeah. man. It was horrible. Unbelievable. It, the throttle up was the last thing they said when they did that. And they, and they were, I guess the boosters were, the rockets were going full force. That's when that explosion happened. I was um, at UNC and I was driving back to my dorm when I heard that on the radio and everybody just ran into back then. You'd have to go to the common areas in the dorm to watch TV right. and, and everybody was glued to it. It was something else. Sadly, it is one of those events in history like 9-11, like the JFK assassination, mm -hmm. where you know where you were when that happened and what you felt at that moment. Kathy just commented on our live stream that she managed Adams University bookstore off campus at UNCG. She had the TV on and everyone there was crying. Such an emotional time. Very was very much was. All right, keep commenting on Facebook and use that hashtag four to five. We're coming back. Okay, so I love hand sanitizer probably a little too much. I keep a bottle, of course, right here at my desk to use whenever I need it. Hey, you want some? Here you go. Now you're all clean. And actually, we just got an email today about new hand sanitizer bottles all throughout the building here at the station because people, they just keep getting sick. So I want to give you a little behind the scenes look at how many times I pass hand sanitizer on my way to the news studio. Follow me this way. We turn the corner and the first dispenser, yeah, it's right here. But that's not all of them. Come on, let's go. Bottle number two. Keep coming. Let me just give us a little light here. And over here we find bottle number three. Right over here, oh yeah, bottle number four. And then all the way across the studio. This, my friends, makes bottle number five. So I keep sanitizing my hands, but is this actually keeping me from getting sick? 
All right, so that is the question, right? There's a lot of talk about if hand sanitizer can actually stop the flu and other viruses from spreading. And now the FDA is warning a popular brand to stop advertising a certain way. The FDA says Purell is making unproven claims in their advertising that their hand sanitizer can help eliminate viruses like the flu, norovirus, MRSA, even Ebola. In this letter, the FDA told Purell to correct the violations or they could take legal action. Their parent company responded. They said that they are making the appropriate changes to their marketing strategy. But even before I told you about this story, one of you made a comment about how healthy or unhealthy hand sanitizer is. May Perkins was watching the 4 to 5 on Facebook yesterday and she commented, it's not good using sanitizer all the time. It's simple. Just wash your hands. So is this true? A study by the American Society for Microbiology compared washing your hands to using hand sanitizer. They found that hand sanitizer, yeah, it took about four minutes to kill the germs on your hands, but washing with soap and hot water for 20 seconds eliminated the same amount of germs in 30 seconds. So yes, washing your hands kills those germs a lot faster if you do it the right way. Got it. You got to sud some up there. Yep. Keep going. <laughs> Front some backs of your hands in between your fingers. So what the, there was a what's the song? Was it happy birthday that you're supposed to sing twice while you're mm -hmm. washing your hands? Happy Is that birthday. right? That's exactly the right. The happy birthday song. Yes, but I, most people don't wash their hands that long. I don't think I thought, I thought you were going to say most people don't wash their oh, hands no. and I was about to crawl under the table. Mm, people have you've seen those at your workplace, I'm sure. Nothing you can do. You know, hand sanitizer is great. I believe if it's 60% uh, alcohol or more, that's what the CDC that what recommends. You got to really Perfect. get the, the potent stuff. Uh, but yeah, it'll Jaylen's take. Jalen's got it over there. Look I'm telling it. you, it's all look, over look. the studio. He's got it over there. He's ready to go. He's there like you a, go. He's like a Price is Right model. <laughs> nice job, Jalen. <laughs> <laughs> I have found your calling. There you go. Yeah, killing that. He is that killing that. Here. Yeah. All right. We'll take a short break. Yeah. Awesome. Bring that over. We'll, we'll be so. right back. Stay there. Thanks, Talk, to Talk to us on Facebook. We're right here. Eric. Yes. <laughs> there we go.
You know, part of what makes a community thrive is small businesses, but opening a small business, that's a different ball game. It can be pretty difficult, but thanks to one Greensboro nonprofit, it's a little easier and they're making a huge difference. Today, I stopped by the Nussbaum Center for Entrepreneurship. This is pretty cool. If you don't know about the Nussbaum Center, you will after about a minute and a half right now. We're going to teach you how they help startups kind of incubate. They help get them going. This guy knows all about it. Well, not this guy. That's somebody else. <laughs> this guy does. This is Sam Funches, who's the president, CEO, of the big, big guy here. Tell me in a nutshell what the Nussbaum Center does. So we help businesses succeed. And I'm supposed to be coming there today. Three areas we focus on is strategic support, operational support, and the emotional support. And anybody that's owned their own small business knows that the biggest challenge is in your brain is fighting all of the negativity that comes at you and you thinking and having to make hard decisions that are difficult. And one thing that I know that you guys do, and I think it's cool, I want you to talk about is how the businesses can interact and help each other, right? Right, so we have, we're considered a mixed use incubator, which means we have businesses in all styles of industries and, and markets. So if you happen to need somebody that's in IT or need an IT provider, we have one in house, they're already vetted, we know how well they work. We'll introduce you to them, and then we can cross-pollinate and create more sales in our own community. Um, how many businesses have come through here, do you think? Uh, to date, in the 33 years that we've been in existence, we have had a little over 450 businesses come and occupy space in here, and we've helped thousands of businesses that haven't taken residency in the building. The only population demographic that's growing in Greensboro right now is over 55 years old. If you want to have a retirement community, that's great. If you want to have a community that's really growing and vibrant and creating jobs and wealth, we need to focus on those small businesses. All right, let's take a look at our forecast here as we go with uh, 51 degrees. That's our current reading in Greensboro, 50 in Winston-Salem and Reedsville, 53 in Burlington. Much cooler in the higher elevations as that colder air starts to filter in. We're in the 30s in Boone. And you look at a high of 49 for your Wednesday after a low tonight of 31. Rain chances slip in 30 to 40 percent Thursday, Friday, but we start to get warmer. Mid to upper 40s those two days. Upper 40s close to 50 on Saturday. That's our best rain chance, unfortunately, 60 percent. Sunday, we're clearing out. Sunny to partly cloudy. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and getting warm. 54 on Sunday, 59 Monday, and 61 degrees for Tuesday. Overnight lows by that time in the low to mid 40s. We'll be right back. Hello, giving you a mic check. Ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together like a classic combination.
Good afternoon and welcome back to the 4 to 5. I'm Maddie Gardner here with Eric Chilton. Today is your voice is out on assignment this afternoon. That's right. We got you connected. Make sure you get on Facebook with us. That would be WFMY News 2's Facebook page and also our YouTube channel as well. We're monitoring those feeds and talking with you during the breaks and during the show. You know what to do. Use that hashtag at the bottom of your screen, 4 to 5. All right. We want to get you caught up on the news of the day. It is time for your 4 to 5 roundup. And we'll start here with the impeachment trial. President Trump's legal team is wrapping up their opening arguments today. Now, Democrats are pushing for testimony from the former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Reports say Bolton's upcoming book links the president to withholding military aid from Ukraine. Some Republican senators say this latest report increases the chances that at least four Republicans will want to hear from witnesses. Once the president's team finishes presenting their case, senators get 16 hours to question both sides, and that will likely begin tomorrow. Because of the impeachment trial, only part of The Young and the Restless aired this afternoon. CBS says the episode will re-air at 1.38 a.m. You can also watch that episode on CBS.com or the CBS All Access app. Now, The Bold and the Beautiful did not air at all today. It will re-air overnight at 2.38 a.m. Of course, new episodes could air as early as tomorrow. But they could also get pushed back because of additional coverage of that impeachment trial. We want to remind you, WFMY does not make decisions about airing your soaps. However, we will let you know what CBS decides as soon as we get those details. J. Crew is shutting down business at Friendly Center in Greensboro. Our news partners at the Triad Business Journal report the store is closing up shop. This announcement comes shortly after the center announced three new stores were moving in. Friendly Center did not comment on why that store is closing, but dry goods will go in the space where J. Crew is now. And you voted and your voice was heard. PTI Airport is ranked among the nation's best small airports. This was part of USA Today's reader survey. PTI ranks fourth out of 10. The poll compared U.S. airports that serve less than 10 million passengers each year with business flights and amenities. Finally, Congresswoman Alma Adams honored the Greensboro for today. This Saturday, February 1st, marks 60 years since the four a and students were refused service at the Woolworth lunch counter downtown and launched the sit-in movement. Joseph McNeil, Franklin McCain, Azell Blair Jr., David Richmond, they all sat at that lunch counter until the store closed. The four then went back to a and campus and asked others to join them in the sit-in movement. Sit-ins happened over the next four days. More than 1,000 people eventually filled Woolworth's store in protest. The lunch counter desegregated on July 26th. All right, our forecast heading into the night tonight it starts to get a little chilly. I will say this though, we will rebound temperature wise, especially by next week. Where do you see those numbers? But for tonight, 31 degrees with clear skies. Clouds will build in a little bit tomorrow for your Wednesday and look for a chance of a late day shower. It's not a huge chance, but we do have that. And uh, as far as what we will see across the area after that, look at this with the uh, future cast showing you that low coming in out of the Gulf and that will start to move on to the east. It's still close enough to us that it brings us that rain chance we talked about for tomorrow. Seven day outlook shows 49 tomorrow. The rain chance is up a little bit 30 to 40% for Thursday, Friday, mid to upper 40s. Saturday, the rainiest day with a 60% chance and 49 and Sunday clearing out and warmer at 54. Well, the coronavirus is still making headlines. 106 people have died from that virus. More than 4,500 others are infected worldwide. Now, here in the United States, more than 100 people have been tested for possible cases. More than 15 Chinese cities are now locked down, and some parts of Russia are considering closing their border to China. All right, reports from a major accounting firm suggest that hospitals need to prepare for the outbreak in the United States. Matt Wolf with RSAS Healthcare Evaluation Consulting Group says the virus has left a massive economic impact already. That report compares the financial impact of this strand of coronavirus to the SARS virus in 2002 and 03. Wolf says the uh, outbreak is hitting China and that tends to have a global ripple effect since their citizens are likely to travel to the U.S. for vacation. And you've likely seen a lot of video of people wearing surgical masks uh, because of the coronavirus. And you see this video when we talk about these stories, but we wanted to know, are the masks actually effective? Research that was done in 2003 suggests they are not. Viruses, they say, are so small that they can pass through a barrier like a surgical mask. Now, the CDC does recommend people wear the masks who have a virus, but it is not recommended that people wear masks to avoid contracting the virus. Thank you. 
here's my question. What okay. do you have right now that if you needed help, you could get it wherever you were? My phone. Your yeah. phone. Cell phone, number one. Right, yes. mm -hmm. okay. So we have our phones. A lot of us have panic buttons yep. on our cars, right? But there's an increase in violent acts in hospitals, hmm. okay, like emergency rooms. And doctors and nurses, they don't always have their phones with them. I mean, you don't always have your phone right. with you with your artwork. Right. And so this happens. What ended up happening a lot of times was backing out of the room if you could and yelling, hey, call security, call security, I need help in here. And that takes a lot of time. All right, so hospitals are trying out these personal panic buttons. Uh, if they feel threatened, what they do is they just push the button. Security and other staff know that they need help. Well, this is, so this is cool that they have that kind of thing, but what's making our hospitals more right. violent? Yeah, and that is the scary part, right? The, really? the answer to that. And they're saying that part of it is the opioid crisis mm. and brings in a lot of behavioral issues and that there's not a lot of support for behavioral and mental health. And so they end up at the ERs and it becomes even more dangerous. Yeah, that's scary to think about, especially if you're there with your family for, for something sure. unrelated, like a broken arm oh, or yeah. you're sick. Yeah. Right, I mean, that happens, right? I mean, yeah. kids break arms, you know, yep. you get the flu and you gotta go. So it's another safeguard right now hospitals are testing this and we're in touch with our local facilities as well to see if they have them so that's going to be an answer coming up on two wants to know and let me guess your password friends <laughs> is one two three four five six <laughs> just kidding you wouldn't do that would you i'm changing my i now. would not just uh -huh. kidding i'm kidding <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. okay but here's the thing do you have one password for most things. Maddie. Oh, Maddie's face went, mm. <laughs> I was kidding the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a new thing. It's called credential hacking. And that's when they log in um, and they get your password and your login from like, let's say your coffee account. Yeah. Do you use your coffee account often, my friend? <laughs> Just every day. <laughs> right. So they would get your login and password from your coffee account and then they would see if they could use it on your mobile banking account, oh on your credit card account, on your other account. And chances are they can. They can. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So they use, you know, some kind of app that you're like, what's the big deal here? Um, and then they get it. Okay, so besides changing the password, the best way to protect yourself is to freeze your credit. How do you do that? Hey, guess what? We're making it easy <laughs> for you. It's gonna be in the two wants to know section. All you have to do is click on three different links and do it, and yes, do it now, people. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Fortify. You don't want to miss this. Google just launched a special ad to celebrate Black History Month. Black History Month starts on Saturday. Now the ad shows the list of most searched topics in the United States. Watch a bit of this. But just like life. <laughs> yes, yeah, such a cool ad. So some of the most searched topics were topped by African Americans. The list covers political, social, sports, and entertainment. Google surveyed 15 years worth of data to see what other most searched items were on the top of the list. You can see the full list of the most searched on this story on our website. Yeah, I know a few people in our newsroom that were not happy that A&T's homecoming yes, was not, was not mentioned. I wonder if Jalen is one of them. Hey, look, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying we got to start. It's searching. the greatest homecoming of all time. That's just that's the reason yeah. they call that's it. That's what that. it is. I mean, there's no other words to describe it. So, yeah. I mean, there it is. Maybe people were just searching Howard's because they already knew about A&T's. Uh, that I might mean, be true. Fair enough. Fair. Because no one knows about Howard. <laughs> <laughs> it is a cool ad, though. I, I recommend you watch the whole thing. It's very neat. All right, so in case you missed it, Tar Heel fans are seeing a pulse in their <laughs> basketball team this year. Uh, last night's victory over NC State is proving to be just what the doctor ordered for the struggling team, despite playing without star point guard Cole Anthony. A banged-up heels group managed a victory. The win gives them two ACC Ws in a row, giving fans a glimmer of hope there. Senior guard Brandon Robinson limped through the night with bruised ribs, but Tar Heel junior Garrison Brooks led all scorers with 25 points. It was a 75-65 victory on NC State's home court. Next up for the Heels, a 10 and 10 Boston College comes to Chapel Hill on Saturday. It was a big win uh, for that squad, not only just because they got two in a row, but of course with, with NC State, that's a big win. Um, a lot of folks, I mean, it, the, I thought that game was a surefire NC State victory, really did. And I, I did watch, kept watching, and then said, wow, they've got a chance with this. So it's a, it's a game changer for the squad because they need some confidence again. I'm not counting my chickens yet. They haven't hatched, so I'm just going <laughs> to hold off and wait hey, and see what the rest of the season I'll looks like. I'll take the two wins. Yeah, it's yeah. always nice to win Probably as a Tar Heel fan. And you know what? Wolfpack, you have another chance at the Dean Dome. Yep, so sure will. There's always two games. It's always fun. <laughs> All right, guess what time it is? Is it Jalen time? It is. That's the best time of the show. Silky Let's be honest. Right Y'all are there. here for Jalen. We know. So I asked you all at home what was on the menu for dinner tonight. And so Glenda, she says something cheap and quick and I uh, completely agree with you, uh, Glenda. I'm on a real tight budget right now. And Brenda, <laughs> she says she's fixing a healthy shake, ate too much last night. That's not gonna cut it for me. Um, I'm not really getting any suggestions. I need y'all to help me out. I'm a little indecisive and I cooked yesterday, so I have no idea. You want some heavy food. I need I can some, I can't, a shake's not gonna cut it. See, that won't It's not it. gonna cut it. No kale smoothie for you? Maybe Jay? a salad, maybe a kale salad. Well, that might work. But not yeah. a smoothie. I can't do it. I need some protein, too. Well, Brenda was whipping up meatloaf and key lime pie yeah, and yeah. everything yeah, exactly last night. Right. So, so I she's, get it. she's going light tonight. I get it. It's all <laughs> hey, about balance, right? Thank you all who are watching right now on the live stream. We really do love chatting with you. If you're wondering what we are talking about, we stream this show every day starting at 4 o'clock on WFM News 2's Facebook page. It's also on our YouTube channel, if that's your thing. Yeah, so you can take us with you wherever you go, and I would venture to say that uh, probably a lot of people might even be happy and half that watch us are watching us either here or on regular TV. We want to see you in all places, so we'll be right back. Keep commenting. Hi there, Julie will tease at A. I heard that, I will be there. Do not be concerned. <laughs>
and welcome back to the four to five. It is officially tax season. You can start filing those returns yesterday. And if you're a real go getter and you've already done that, you can actually track your tax return. It's all on the IRS website, but that's a little bit difficult to find. So we linked you to it. Just find this story on our website. It says, where's my tax refund? How to check on the status of your money. Scroll on down here. We're going to have a few links and you say if you sit your return, you want to check on the status. You can check on it at this link. That's all you have to do. It pulls up the IRS website for you. You can fill in all that information, important stuff. Just make sure you keep it private. Put your social security number in there, your filing status, and how much you are expecting in your refund. That's it. And then you can track it. It's just like Amazon, but it's money and not a fun package from Amazon. Hopefully you're getting some back, though. Might end up being a fun package. You never know. Package of money. All right, starting a small business. That can be daunting for a first timer, but not if you have help. So today we're going to show you how the Nussbaum Center for Entrepreneurship in Greensboro helped one man reach his goal and then some. Take a look. Ronald and um, Michael are there right now. When I'm done here, I'll head that way. My business install fiber optics and data lines for businesses in commercial space mostly and we in the 20 years that I did it I was a sole proprietor. So you worked out of your house? I worked out of my house. The Nussbaum Center gave me the skill set to basically step out on my own. You know the leadership, the financial help and I was able to take that and grow because there's so much you don't know when you go from a sole proprietor to a to a true entrepreneur. It's miscellaneous supplies. It's all about taking business classes, tax classes. It's all about learning how to manage your cash flow. If I had not been with the Nussbaum Center, I would probably be out of business. That place does excellent work. They said they've incubated more than 400 and something businesses in the past 33 years that they basically will kind of walk them through the first five years. He said that about 80% of businesses fail in the first five years wow. and they their success ratio is like 80% of their business. Why was he saying that small businesses were so important to build a city? So uh, the Nussbaum Center, so Sam Funches is the president there and he was saying earlier when I interviewed him that he said small businesses have accounted for almost 100% of new jobs in our area over the last I can't remember how many years um, and he says that the giant corporation jobs have actually reduced. You would think hmm. that they would always be there but they're not so the there's a shift to local and small small business that's happening and our area really needs to jump on that. Yeah, we got to support small yes. businesses. So they keep coming here. They keep they keep us afloat is what they do. All right, so spending time with the family. A lot of people talk about how important that is. That's very important to me. That's yeah. why we have sit down dinners every night. And there's a new study that shows that the average parents and I couldn't believe it when I read this gets five hours of FaceTime with their kids for the whole week. Wow. Yeah, the survey says moms and dads feel distant from their kids. Most blamed poor family time on kids being in front of screens all the time and being on their phones during traditional family time in the evening. Well, guess what, parents? You have to fix that, and they're willing to fix the problem and connect with their kids. 80% of parents say they take an active interest in their kids' favorite activities to try to reconnect. 20% learned how to play Fortnite. 33% <laughs> have listened to their child's favorite music to bond with them, and 25% of parents uh, also adopted some s slang words like dope, trying to fit in. <laughs> That's you, right, Eric? Way to be dope. Yeah, well, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Playing Fortnite, saying dope. My kids laugh at me because now I've taken on when they say, you know, instead of giving me a cause, why don't you hit me up? And they're like, oh, oh look at him. Look he at says, it. hit me up. Yeah, they're <laughs> picking on me all the time. So I think this is important too, right? Family time. A lot of ours it was is. spent on the road and doing trips when I was cheering competitively. Um, but I asked you on Facebook, how do you prioritize family time in your household? And Jalen Gilkey is checking in on those comments now. Oh, <laughs> what are my you fault. doing? Screen time, right? Oh my God! <laughs> oh, I see you. <laughs> screen time too. Much. All right, so let's get to our first comment from Wendy. She said, "We make time for family every day, even if it's just conversation <laughs> at dinner, for a long conversation and snuggles at bedtime." And Cheryl, she says, "A set time. We have a set time each day for family time. It could be playing games, devotions, or movie time. Just a jam session to, to discuss how the day or the week has been going." And then Cassie, she says, "I'm curious to see the answers on this as we grow our family. One of the most touchy subjects is to how to balance the appropriate amount of screen time. And this is an epidemic that's kind of taken over the whole world. This whole screen time thing. It's kind of putting divides into families and whatnot. But I like the 20% of." parents that said they learn how to play Fortnite. Yeah. You know, just pick up I an like interest that your words. kid has. 
you know? Yeah. Just something Connect to bond over. Exactly. Now I'm all for screen time, right? right? I think it's important to stay connected, especially from the hours of 4 to yeah, 5. That is exactly. the time. That's a good time to be on Facebook and commenting with us, but there is a time <laughs> to put those devices down and, and talk to someone. It's all, as Jalen said it best, it's all balance. Yeah, it's, it's always about speaking balance. Speaking of people commenting right now, Shelby J. Yes. She's watching on Facebook. Saying with Prince and the new power generation Very who lives cool. right here in Greensboro. So yeah. thank you for logging in. We love it. Also our regulars, Brenda and Charlotte, we're so happy to see you guys. Make sure you're still chatting with us. We're going to keep this live stream up a little bit longer so we can get those comments in. Absolutely will. All right, let's take a look at the forecast. Sorry about that. I, <laughs> I went to sleep with Jalen. I was getting ready to play some games with him. Screen time. More screen time, JG. All right, we got 51 degrees in uh, Greensboro right now. 50 in Winston-Salem. You're looking at uh, temperatures back in the mountains. A far cry from this. You can tell where the cold air is coming from, can't you, as we look north and west there. So that'll be moving in our direction. But Galax and Boone in those areas in the upper 30s right now. It's chilly. Tonight and tomorrow, here's your forecast. 31 for the overnight low. It'll be clear and cool. Mountain communities in the upper 20s. We've got 49 tomorrow with clouds building in and a late day shower chance. It's not huge, but we do have that chance. There's the low. It stays down to the south. That little broken black line you see there is just kind of a, a, a frontal area that's falling apart basically, but it's just an area of disturbed weather that'll move over us and that's why we see the clouds go on the increase and a chance of a shower or two. When you look at the uh, temperatures though over the next couple of days, we do see a change here. Uh, watch the seven days. We see the temperatures kind of hover in the mid to upper 40s for a while before we really start to warm up next week. It will feel very spring like. We haven't had much of really cold weather this winter so far. 45 on your Thursday after tomorrow's 49. We'll see that rain 30% chance Thursday. 40% on Friday and 48. We start to approach the 50 degree mark on Saturday, but look for those rain chances at a 60%. And as we head into Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, we clear out and look at this warming trend. Now our average high is 49. We'll hit that on Saturday, but 54 on Sunday. Lows will go to the low to mid 40s for Monday and Tuesday morning, but highs build in with lots of sunshine. We'll see a high of 59 on Monday. That is a beautiful day. Tuesday even better, very comfortable and 12 degrees above normal with a high of 61 on Tuesday of next week. Coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5, a small earthquake rattled some nerves in Guilford County. Some thought it was an explosion, others thought it was a tractor trailer hitting their home. We talked to people who felt the ground shake coming up next on WFMY News 2 at 5. Hey, I'm giving you a mic check, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. Hello, hello, mic check one, two, three, four, five. It is Tuesday, February, not yet, almost January. January. Hi there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hello, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Like that. We did our own thing. Hey, Cali Cow. Salvador Escobar's bond was set at $100,000. Many of you thought that was too low. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's Alma doing a mic check. I'm about to drop my package. Doing it now. Mic check. One, two, three. Cali, uh, I got moved to the touch screen, just in case you didn't know.
So today, a co-worker told me that the hashtag Girl Dad was trending because of Kobe. So off I went to read all the posts. It was both heartwarming and heartbreaking all at the same time. ESPN anchor Elle Duncan described her only encounter with Kobe. She said she was pregnant with a girl, and when she told Kobe that she was pregnant with a girl, he said, girls are the best. He went on to say, I would have five more girls if I could. I'm a girl dad. And now it's trending. Now to be clear, I had three boys before I had little Drew, my only girl. And every dad wants a son, everybody knows that. And I love all my kids the exact same, that is the truth. But a girl and a dad, there's something special. You know, it's uh, an intangible, I can't put my finger on it, don't know how to explain it to you, but it's special. It doesn't mean I love her more, it's just different. Now I've always been a basketball fan. It is my favorite sport hands down, but I didn't get into the NBA as much post Michael Jordan, but hearing about Kobe's relationship with his daughters has drawn me into him to the point that I find myself a Kobe fan like never before, crying at all the news coverage, especially when I hear about he and his daughters, especially he and Gianna, who we call Gigi, and all I can see is my little Drew. And it's hard to contain emotions when you talk about these two. And I'll just say this, if you're a dad and you haven't had a girl yet, say a prayer that you do. Because goodnight hugs, tea parties, and having your nails painted by your daughter make you more of a man than anything else you'll ever do. Girl dad, it's a real thing. And Kobe was that to the end. But that's just my two cents. And that's your four to five. WFMY News 2 at five starts now. We begin with breaking news out of Greensboro, where health officials have confirmed a case of mumps at UNCG. School leaders say a temporary worker has contracted the disease and is no longer on campus. Yes, they say that worker was only on campus for three days and was only contagious for one of those days.